Western Refining, fueling our lives. Come on now. This must be. Dirty pop, baby, 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 you can't stop. I know you like this. Dirty pop. Now, why you want to try to classify the type of thing that we do? Cause we're just fine doing what we like, and we say the same for you. I'm tired of feeling all around me, animosity. Just worry about drugs, cause I'm on your mind. Now, people, can't you see? It doesn't matter. I'm the car I drive with the ice around my neck. It Don't you recognize that it's just about respect? It doesn't matter. I'm the clothes I wear and where I go and why. It doesn't matter. It's the truth. Checking in for East Carolina, number 25, Brandon Stiff. McGregor underneath, spinning and laying it in. McGregor, McGregor the big guy. Hasn't played well early to start the season, but over the last 10, 12 games, he's averaging 10.6 rebounds, so he's really helping them out inside. Best shooter in the league at 61%, and that makes it 13-5, to Roadrunners. Campbell bumped as he tried to make a move, and Devin Agassi will Fouls pick up one of ETSA. his first foul. Devin Agassi, his first personal, first team foul on the Roadrunners. And that's what Campbell needs to do. He's a big guard. Good driver. He's already taken a couple threes early and settled there. He needs to attack off the dribble and get to the basket and draw some fouls. Richmond, a deep three. Too strong. And Keon Lewis grabs another rebound. Just over 15 minutes. They find McGregor underneath again. Lays it in. 20, and he'll McGregor, go to the line for a chance good. at the three-point play. The foul on Caleb the White. Foul's on the Pirates, number two, Caleb White. His first. That's His first the personal, second now. Not East Carolina. McGregor to and the Enrico line McGregor averaging almost eight points a game at the line, looking for his fifth of the night. ECU trying to switch something up, trying to throw them off. Goes man the last two possessions. Enrico McGregor just gets good position inside and finishes. 16-5, 11-point lead and a steal. Taken away by Jones. Gives to Agassi, and his layup Number is good. Agassi. And Jeff Lebo wants timeout. a timeout. East Carolina. Another Pirate turnover, leading to a transition bucket. Agassi with five early on, and it's a 13-point lead for UTSA, not quite five minutes into the opening half. And this is amazing. That's a great call by Brooks Thompson right there to go zone, kind of a three-quarter court trap just to throw ECU off a little bit. They get a steal. Augusti gets out in transition. Big-time finish and a 13-point lead five, less than five minutes into the game. I mean, this is not the start that ECU or anybody expected. 18-5 to five Roadrunners. And they'll keep the pressure on. Pirates basketball. East Carolina inbounds. Robinson away to White. Robinson will bring it across. Roadrunners settle back into the man-to-man -man now. Robinson finds Campbell around to Richmond, but underneath the basket before the shot went up, a whistle and a foul. On the Roadrunners. Falls on the Roadrunners, number 20, Enrico McGregor. It'll be on McGregor. His first personal foul, 13. Jockeying for position foul. underneath. First on McGregor. Pirates That's basketball. number two now on UTSA Checking as Pirates, Prince, Williams four, Prince Williams checks into the game for, 11, for the Antonio Pirates, Robinson. replacing Antonio Robinson. Williams, the 6'5", 200-pound sophomore out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And now the Roadrunners. Checking in for the Roadrunners. Will send in Kai Bjorn Sherman. The seven-footer out of Washington 20, State. McGregor. Pirates get it in. Stiff lost the handle. Taken away by the Roadrunners. Here's Lewis losing the handle briefly, but getting it back. And now they'll set it up in the half court with the 13-point lead. 14 and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. Pirates back in the zone now. And 10 on the shot clock. Jones with it to Agassi. Now Lewis launches the three. 
Richmond goes up high to pull down the miss. Williams in the front court to Richmond. Couldn't get the three off. Campbell off a wicked screen. Finds a wide open wide in the corner who couldn't dock down the three. And then a foul on East Carolina on the Fouls rebound. The number 25, Brandon Stiff. His first It'll go on foul. Brandon Stiff. Foul the Pirates. Back in His Greece, first, Carolina, that's the third 34. now on Michael Zangieri. East Carolina and Zangieri returns for ECU replacing Caleb White. So still an 18 to five lead. For UTSA, approaching 13 and a half minutes to go here in the first period. Jones in the lane, knocked away, but a foul. And he'll be going to the line. And I think this zone is just too passive right now. They look, they're they kind of just the standing there, letting them swing the ball around. They're not forcing any action. They're not making you know, UTSA uncomfortable. Foul. And so they're able to move the ball around, get it into the high Going post. The they're doing UTSA, whatever they want right now. Richmond Jones picks up his shooting. first foul, and Phillip Jones will go back to the line. 0 of 2 already tonight from the stripe. Roadrunners are the third best free throw shooting team in the league. Jones notwithstanding as he's 0 for 3. He's got two that have just grazed the rim. Still 18 to 5. Jones does get the roll that time for his third point of the night. 14 point Roadrunner advantage. And pressure again. Williams gets it across. Finds Richmond in the lane to Stiff. Blocked. Richmond retrieves at midcourt. Here's Campbell out to Richmond and his second Number three one, of the night. That's what Richmond Campbell three. needs to do. He's a driver, gets into that paint, and then Richmond, he knows how to locate, relocate. He's a big-time shooter, gets his feet set, knocks down his second three of the night. East Carolina with its second three ball. They average more than eight per game this year. 13-minute mark of the first half. Agassi trying to answer, and he does. Number and ECU, one, they just need Agassi to close out a little three. more aggressive, a little get a high, hand up higher. UTSA is just too comfortable right now taking these shots. 22 to 8, Richmond warming up. His Number third one, three of the night. Uh, both these teams, not the best field goal defensive team, so there's going to be a lot of points tonight, but Richmond, an elite level shooter, showing you why. He's got nine on three, three pointers. Nearly stolen. Agussi just inside the arc. Knocks down Agassi. another jumper. Agussi, I can't believe he is a walk-on guard for this team. He's second leading scorer. Plays with a lot of heart, a lot of energy. He's a big-time scorer. 13-point lead now for the Roadrunners. Williams with it. Throws it away, but a whistle and a foul on UTSA. Will number one, Help Agassi. the Pirates avoid the turnover. That's on Agassi. That's his second. Three and number three of the half on the road runners. It'd be a big foul sending him to the bench to see if they keep him there for the rest of the half or they decide to bring him back with two fouls. Haji Thomas into the game now for UTSA. 12 minutes to go in the first half. 24-11, the road runners with the lead. Williams for the Pirates to Zangari out high. The big man finds White working down the lane, throws up an off-balance shot, but draws the foul and will go to the line. Fouls After the, the timeout, Sherman, Sherman picks up the foul. Team that team is his first and fouls the fourth of the half on UTSA. 11.47 to go. Following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball Championships. Supreme Laundry, Western Refining, Howdy's, Hunt Companies. Be sure to visit one of the merchandise stands on the East Concourse behind Section C and D to pick up your championship merchandise provided by Event One. There's a wide variety of apparel and commemorative items featuring the Conference USA logo and the logo of your favorite team. Millions of people living as foes. Maybe it's not too late to learn how to love and forget.
Akeem Richmond trying almost single-handedly to keep the Pirates in this first half. ECU trailing 24 to 11, but Richmond with nine two. of the Pirates' 11 points to start this game. He's already three of five from deep, halfway to tying that record. Big time shooter. Caleb White at the line. Hits the first, 71%. One more for White. For White, and just over 71% for East Carolina on the year as a team from the foul line. That is best in Conference USA. White gets them both. He's got four. It's been Richmond and White accounting for all 13 Pirate points. 11-point lead for the Roadrunners. Thomas in there running the point now for the Roadrunners. Lewis with it now. ECU just looks a little more energetic, this, this possession right here. Coach Liebel probably got on him that timeout. They just came out with a little more energy. Lewis. Contact, but no whistle. Finds Sims, who missed the driving attempt, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Pirates basketball. More enthusiastic, as you said that time, on the defensive end yeah, for East Carolina. They're just more active. They're jumping around. Their hands are up. Guys are flying in passing lanes, and they get a 35-second shot clock violation. So the Pirates trying to cut the deficit to single digits. Robinson back in there for East Carolina. White with it now. Looking to Zangary. Gets it to him on the block. Robinson with it in the corner. He'll drive on Sherman, who commits his second foul. Yeah, and that's exactly what they have to do. UTSA, they're switching ball Balls screens, the so there's a lot of mismatches on the court. And if Robinson, your point guard, is matched up with a seven-foot center, get out of the way and let him drive the basket. So the they do that exactly there. They draw a foul. That's smart basketball. Sherman. Sherman checks Pirates out as basketball. McGregor returns now for UTSA. Checking in for UTSA. George Matthews also coming into the game. George Matthews, the 6'5", 220-pound sophomore out of Phoenix. 10.47 to go in the first half. Deflected on the inbounds and stolen. And ahead to Thomas. He'll lay it in for his Number first two, two of the night. Haji Fifth turnover Thomas. for ECU already. Not doing themselves any favors. Doubling up the Pirates now with 10 and a half minutes to go before halftime. White grabbed and fouled by Thomas. Balls on the Roadrunners, number two. a handful two, of jerks. Thomas, his, his first, first personal That's now foul. the sixth of the half. fouls on UTSA. on UTSA. That's a call he saw a lot in November. You haven't seen much here in February or March, and Coach Thompson did not like that one. Pirates down 13 with the ball. White with it, finds Richmond. He'll work off a screen and launch another three. His fourth Number of the one, first Richmond half. Three. Nothing but bottom of the net. Again, they're trying to switch ball screens. He sees a mismatch. Big time score. He just hits him with a little crossover and drills a three right in his face. Midpoint of the first half, and it's a 10-point game. Roadrunners trying to figure out that pirate zone now, and a whistle stops play as Stiff Balls picks up Pirates, his second foul of the night. And Stiff. number five now on East his Carolina personal foul. as Prince William comes back in, back in for along the with Paris Roberts Campbell, Paris Roberts replacing Campbell. Stiff and Antonio Robinson. Roadrunners basketball. Roadrunners inbound. Lewis finds Thomas out high. Lewis finds Thomas again. This time the baseline jumper won't fall. And East Carolina could not get a handle on the rebound. UTSA basketball. It'll stay with the Roadrunners and a fresh shot clock. They get it into Sims. And now Lewis helps run the show. Around to Matthews. Lewis trying to penetrate. The dish out to Thomas. And a three-second three violation. Violation. Pirates basketball. 
And the Roadrunners, without a gussy in the game, seem to have slowed up a little bit offensively the last few trips. Yeah, that was very a very stagnant possession. They didn't have any action. There's no movement. They just kind of thrown the ball around the perimeter. And I think it was a good call. You don't see it often, a three-second violation, but they were just camped out in the paint. Zangari in the lane. The left-hand hook too strong. And McGregor clears it for UTSA. Still a 10-point Roadrunner lead. Matthews has his pass deflected, saved in by Sims. And now Lewis, top of the key, another three good. Keon Lewis for three. Keon Lewis, the Juco transfer. He's had a couple of those looks tonight where nobody's near him. He's kind of just casually stepping into it, and he's, he's a capable, capable shooter. Fifth three-pointer of the first half for the Roadrunners, and it's back to a 13-point lead. Williams tried the bounce pass, and they'll say it's off Zangari out of bounds. I thought it went Roadrunners off GSA basketball. defender's foot, but the ref, I think, thought it hit Zangari's as well. But another careless turnover for ECU. So a chance for the Roadrunners to stretch the lead back out at 13. Near steal, and the Pirates do come away with the deflection. Williams gets it ahead to Paris Roberts-Campbell. Pretty hesitation, and he'll lay it in. 22. He just knows Paris how to get Roberts to the basket. Campbell. He's a strong physical guard. Good, good move in transition, just attacking the basket. First two of the night for Paris Roberts-Campbell. Roadrunners by 11, and Lewis draws another foul. This one on Prince Balls Williams. On the Pirates, number four, Prince Williams. That'll be his first, his first and the sixth foul. of the half. On the, Pirates. on the Pirates. Timeout. Out. Official timeout on the floor. Conference Here USA would like to go. express our gratitude to the El Paso community for their hospitality and support of this championship. Special recognition goes to the El Paso Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Sun Bowl, and the UTEP Athletic Department. Conference USA would like to thank the following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball Championships. Glazers, Allen Up Distributors, Superior Imaging Experts. Roadrunners basketball. Including five of six from three-point range. ECU's 15th in the conference in field goal defense, but it's only around about 45%, not 78%. Great start for the Roadrunners. Thomas dribbles out of trouble. Open in the corner, Matthews, but he goes up and Traveling down with violation. it. East Carolina it's twice basketball. now they've come out of timeouts with more energy, so I don't know if they're telling them what's going to be called in, this, in the timeout or if they just jump on them and the guys kind of respond to, to being criticized, then it's been working. So if they can maintain that for the next seven minutes here and keep playing the zone that actively, they'll get back into this game. That's the sixth turnover, the first half on the Roadrunners. Williams... Finds Richmond, another three. That one off the mark. You're more surprised when they don't go in. I'm just, team I'm just surprised they keep letting them get looks. I mean, put a guy on him and have him face guard and make someone, someone else beat you. McGregor running down the lane with the left hand up and in. McGregor showing you why he shoots 60% in, in the league, leads the league. He just gets to the basket. And he's got a great touch around the rim. Paris Roberts-Campbell bumped and fouled. 
as he made the drive. Fouls at number 22, the Roadrunners. It'll go on George Matthews. Matthews. His first personal. That's his first. Number Back seven now on the Roadrunners. So this will be a one and one Jones opportunity for Roberts Campbell. 75% Going to the line for the Pirates, free throw shooter on the season. Roberts Campbell to shoot two. Correction, one and one. Both teams done a decent job of not putting the other on the foul line here in the first half. The Pirates Roberts now Campbell three of the three bonus. from the line after that make by Campbell. He averages almost 12 a game. Makes it a 12-point margin with 7.02 to go in the half. His bonus. Campbell already with four. Last time they played, he only had two points in their 10-point victory. Seven-minute mark of the first half and an 11-point Roadrunner lead. They throw over the pressure. Lewis to McGregor. Now to Sims for a three. That one's good. 32. Jordan, Jordan Sims, he's Sims got 154 three-point three, three point field goals in his career. He's moving up their list in their all-time standing, so he's a very, very capable shooter as well. Another wide open look for Richmond, and that one. is number five. The senior does not want to go down this way. He's keeping his team in this game with five threes already, one away from the record in the first 14 minutes of this game. 34-23, 11-point lead for UTSA. Thomas. Jones tried to get it into McGregor once again, but broken up basketball. by the Pirates the as Pirates, Antonio, Robinson Antonio Robinson comes back in, replacing the freshman Caleb, two, White. Caleb White. I just don't, I just can't understand how UTSA is not locating Akeem Richmond. He's, he's one of the best shooters in the history of the NCAA from, from a made field three-point field goal standpoint, and he's been open all night long. They get it into McGregor, point blank range McGregor. again. Yeah, it's just a very simple crossing action right there in the out of bounds play. Move the ECU defender out of the way, proceeds a simple bounce pass and goes up for the dunk. McGregor having a solid night on the inside. His shooting percentage going up. Zangary will be going to the line. Fouls on the Roadrunners, number 20. McGregor, his McGregor second McGregor has his foul. second foul now 18 here in the first the half. To the line for the Pirates, number 34, number eight Michael Zangieri. On UTSA as a team, two. but this will be a two-shot opportunity for Zangieri. 68% shooter from the strike. as his first point of the evening. Back in for the Roadrunners, number 45, Kai Bjorn Sherman, Sherman returns. Number 20, Enrico McGregor. As McGregor will sit at least for a while with those two fouls. And Sherman's not a bad back. He's a seven-footer. He's a big guy. Sometimes you think a a lot of those guys are just stiffs, but he's a very capable player. He can move for a seven-footer, and so McGregor going to the bench shouldn't hurt him that much. Pretty spin move by Thomas, but he couldn't finish. Sims couldn't get the follow-up to go. Batted out to Keon Lewis, and the Roadrunners will reset. Seems all the loose balls are going UTS's way tonight. Wide open lane for Philip Jones. Jones. They get a second-chance shot. The seed parts for him. He takes it right to the cup. Five for Jones, 13-point lead again for UTSA. Just under five and a half minutes to go before intermission. Richmond, a deep three, that time off the mark, and Sims flags down the miss. 38-25, Roadrunners. Lewis with it around the perimeter. And their guards need to do more on the perimeter. All they do is just stand at wing, point, wing, just pass it to each other. They need to cut through, Falls go to the, the baseline, do a little baseline drift, maybe screen for each other, just get Richmond. some more movement so they, you see doesn't know where they are at all times. And Lewis, his drive the there, Pirates. draws the second foul Going of the night the on Akeem Richmond. Number, 44, number seven Lewis. on the Pirates, so this will be a one-on-one one one opportunity one. for Keon Lewis, who is the fourth best free throw shooter in Conference USA at 84% on the year. And I don't even think Coach Lebo is even looking at anyone on his bench to take Akeem Richmond out of the way he's shooting right now. And they're playing zone, so he'll, he'll be safe in that 3-2 zone that they play. Won't be able to draw a lot of fouls. One more for Lewis. Lewis hits the front end. 20th in the league in scoring at just a shade under 13 points a game. Lewis hits them both. He's got eight, the lead to 15 now. 
for UTSA. Richmond ahead to Robinson. And now the Roadrunners give the Pirates a taste of their own medicine with a zone. Robinson's jumper from the foul line. Cleared by Sherman. Four and a half remaining in the opening period. And the Roadrunners, with their largest lead of the game, look to stretch it out even more. Sims with it behind the arc. Around on the far side to Jones. They swing it around once again. That three rims out, but Thomas goes sailing in for the follow-up. Haji Thomas, Thomas, only 6'1". The guard is an elite athlete. Got up for that rebound in the tipping. 17-point lead for the Roadrunners at the four-minute mark of the first half. Campbell answers with a three. Number Campbell finally gets a three to drop his third Campbell one attempt three. of the night. Known more as a driver, but that's a big-time bucket right there to keep this within smelt sniffing distance. 14 points, the lead now for the Roadrunners. The lob to Sherman, and he is undercut by one of the Pirates. They'll tag Prince Williams with Balls his Pirates, second foul four, of the first half. That'll be the eight and a one and one the upcoming official for Kai Bjorn Sherman. We'd like to thank, thank the following local supporters of this year's CUSA Basketball, basketball Championships. Menchies, Costco, DSI Graphics. Lucchese Boots, proud supporter of Conference USA Basketball Championship. Best boot in town with convenient locations throughout El Paso. Lucchese has hardworking, fun-loving, knowledgeable group of individuals who are ready to serve you. Carolina number two, Caleb White. At the line, number 45, Kai Bjorn Sherman to shoot. 42% from the floor, almost 43 from three as Sherman hits the one front end, one and one. Yeah, ECU's doing enough offensively to be in this game. It's just they have to get a stop somehow defensively, whether they're playing zone, whether they're playing man, close out on the shooters, make them miss a shot, and then get the rebound. Sherman has his first two of the night. 16-point Roadrunner lead and a travel. Traveling violation. Pressure again UTSA by the Roadrunners, and that is turnover number eight of the night on ECU. Yeah, ECU is just all out of sorts right now. They, they don't look comfortable on the court. Their body language is, is bad. The bench has no energy. They need something good for them to happen to get back into this game before halftime and cut into the 16-point lead. Three and a half minutes to go before halftime. Lewis trying to add to that lead. Doesn't get the roll. Sherman can't get the tip to fall. And it's cleared by Caleb White. Quickly up the floor and another turnover. Lewis ahead to Thomas. And one. Number two, Haji Thomas. Basket is good. Six for Thompson, Haji Thomas. Carolina, Caleb White. Coming in. For a Gussie who picked foul. up his second foul, and that's when things sort of 
cooled off for the Roadrunners just a little bit, but Thomas has really ignited things again for the Roadrunners. Yeah, and he averages nine points per game, so he, he's a good player for them. He had 11 the last time these two teams played, but they are making them ECU pay every time there's a turnover. That foul on Caleb White was his second, the ninth. Wide open look again for Richmond. Couldn't finish that time. But a rebounding foul on the Roadrunners. On the Roadrunners. His first personal foul. 19 fouls. Richmond's the Roadrunners. a little upset with himself after that one. He was so wide open. He probably slowed his shot down just a little bit too much there. But he's 5 of 10 on the day. He'll take 50% any day of the week. Sims called for the foul as Stiff, Stiff earns the toes bonus. the line for the one and one. Four Pirates with two fouls in the first half. Stiff gets both ends of the one and one, a 54% free throw shooter. And it's a 16-point Roadrunner lead at the three-minute mark of the opening half. Sims with it back to Lewis. Lewis left alone. Couldn't knock down that three. And Stiff shoots it ahead to Williams. Good find underneath to White for the lay-in. Pretty basketball right there. And if ECU can get out back in transition, they thrive there. And that was a great drop-down pass by Williams. 46-32. Lewis gets it to Thomas in the lane. Off Sherman's fingertips and another Roadrunner turnover. Campbell spotting up for the three. That one's good. ECU can score in a hurry on you. They've done it all season long. Now they've got some life. Make it back down to an 11-point game. Once you see the ball go through on the offensive end, you're a lot more active, more bouncy on the defensive end, and your team kind of just snowball effects and start playing better. Seventh three of the first half for the Pirates. Lewis driving, throws up a wild shot, and ahead it goes to Campbell. Grabbed and fouled, and that's going to be an intentional foul. Intentional foul is the call. So it'll be two Number shots two the and the ball Thomas. for the Pirates. Haji Thomas His called for the intentional, foul not the making a play really for the ball. Yeah, it was a little aggressive, and that's probably why he got the intentional call. He was trying not to let Paris Roberts Campbell get the shot off, but. I thought he was making a play on the ball, but it was it was a little aggressive, and I can see why the refs call it intentional. Brooks Thompson not happy with the call. Campbell too strong. Ten points for him in the first half. And with a minute 50 to go, East Carolina can cut it to 10. And Campbell does. And now they can get it to single digits. Pirates basketball. Yeah, After you, the intentional foul. If you had told me before the game, Keem Richmond's going to have five threes in the first half, I would never have guessed they would be down 16 points at that, <laughs> at that time. But they remain calm, finally get it in, and turn it over. A hurried basketball. pass by Williams trying to beat the five-second count, and he bounces it into the UTSA bench. And it looks like Campbell maybe jammed a finger or something there. He's a little slow walking back down the court. So the Roadrunners, not the worst thing that could have happened in that sequence as they give up just the one point and still have a 10-point lead with a minute 45 to go in the half. Thomas with it, playing catch with Lewis. Into Sherman. Tapped into the hands of Williams, who wants to run. Campbell with it. Out to another wide open look for Richmond. Sherman clears it, and Brooks Thompson wants a timeout. The Roadrunner's shooting percentage may have dwindled down to about 60% now in the first half, and Brooks Thompson wants to talk things over with a minute 19 to go. That's a good call for a timeout right there. Things, the team's probably getting a little bit complacent with this big lead. Got a couple of sloppy offensive possessions where you got nothing out of it. But they've done a good job defensively. Um, hopefully they can build on this lead here. 
46-36, and the Pirates, on the other hand, really have done a nice job of not panicking. This one could have gotten away from them very quickly, but they have battled right back into it. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see coaches just going nuts on the sideline when their teams aren't showing any life, but Coach Lebo has done this for a long time. He's, he knows it's a long game, and he's, he's stuck with the game plan. He's, he's stayed in the zone, even though UTSA is shooting so well. A lot of times you see other coaches panic and throw out another defense they have and just try to be more gimmicky, but he's sticking to his guns, and and knowing what his team can do best. Just over a minute to go before halftime. And a foul on Campbell. As Miles the Pirates the have extended that defense now. Campbell. That's number two on Campbell. Yeah, that's just not a smart foul, 40 feet from the basket. I, I like two that he's going for a steal, trying to be active, trying to get his team going, but you know they're shooting the double bonus. You, you can't grab a guy's arm that far from the basket and send him to the line for some free points. Both teams now in the double bonus. Free throw short One more from Sims. 113 to go in the half. Sims 57% on the year, and he gets a friendly bounce on the second one. He's got seven now here in the opening half. 11 points the lead now for UTSA. As we tick down to the final minute of the first half. White, they get it to Richmond. Campbell in the lane. Muscles that one up and in. That was just a phenomenal offensive possession against the 2-3 zone. The ball was moving, never stopped in anybody's hands. Is whipping around against the zone. They got it inside to the middle and got an easy point-blank shot. Nine-point lead now for UTSA. Final 40 seconds of the half. Lewis with it. Gets it back from Phillip Jones. Shot clock at 12. Lobbing inside. Too tall for Sherman, who looked like he got his legs tangled up just a little bit. And so now East Carolina will have the final opportunity of the half. 47-38, the Roadrunners. Coach Lebo wants him to go at 10 seconds here. Williams near midcourt. Gets it going with seven. Spinning, throws it up with a right hand. Tip no good. And the first half will come to an end. It's half time. With the Roadrunners UTSA hanging on Road to a nine-point lead. Pirates, they had it up to as many as 17. But credit to Pirates for remaining patient, cutting it down to single digits with as, with as big a margin as it was. That's not a bad spot to be in at halftime. Yeah, all things considered, you know, as sluggish as they came out, as hot as UTSA has shot the ball, to be down only nine at half, I think ECU, that's a, that's a margin that's, you know, they can come back in the second half that they've probably done before and then overcome some of these deficits. But UTSA has just done an amazing job offensively, getting out in transition too, off the steals and turnovers, getting some easy baskets that way. And they've shot lights out too from, from the perimeter. Once again, our halftime score. UTSA, the number 13 seed, leading East Carolina, the 12 seed, 47. 38. Stay tuned later on. We'll have halftime stats and get you ready for the second half. This is the 2014 Conference USA Basketball Championship live from El Paso, Texas on the CUSA Digital Network.
We've got a treat for you here at halftime. It's called Bounce and Score. We direct your attention now to the court. We've got two contestants on one end. Noah will be on the blue ball, and Johnny will be on the red. They'll bounce to midcourt, then hop off, run, pick up the basketballs, and the first one to score is our winner. Noah and Johnny, are you ready? Bring the action. Set. Go. Cheer my fans. No one, Johnny. Here we go. Keep it going. Okay, climb on off. Here we go. First one to score is the winner. How about that? Is that Johnny? Johnny was the first to score. Congratulations. That was impressive. How about it for no one, Johnny fans? Fifteen minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. See how much you could save when you visit Geico.com for your free rate quote. Geico is the official insurance company of Conference USA. The Conference USA Championships are brought to you by your neighbors at Phillips 66. Fueling the neighborhood with performance gas and just about everything else like we have been for the past 80 years. Phillips 66, proud to be here. Brought to you by Gatorade, the G-Series Fuels Conference USA. Prime, perform, recover. Three fuels for three stages of the game. Nike is the official ball supplier of Conference USA. Conference USA and its member institutions would like to thank Nike for its support. Fans, be sure to grab your 2014 Conference USA Basketball Championship Souvenir Program. It's absolutely free, and it's filled with information about Conference USA players and teams, including rosters, statistics, and news of interest. Conference USA fans, be sure to visit the Cincinnati District Fan Fest across Mesa Street this week. Starting at 1.30 p.m. each day, fans can enjoy a spirited family atmosphere with visiting pep bands, spirit squads, and local entertainment. Visit utepathletics.com for details. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here, you can take a break. I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Huh. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I'm happy. Clap along if 
welcome back the Pirates of East Carolina. Welcome back, the Roadrunners of UTSA. Across the way at Memorial Gym in the Conference USA Women's Tournament, congratulations to UTSA. 90 to 89 winners over Tulsa this evening.
East Carolina basketball to start the second half. Robinson for ECU finds Richmond. Robinson once again pulls up from the foul line and it's cleared by McGregor. Agussie back in there, got off to a good start but ran into foul trouble in the first half. Agussie from the top of the key. They get it down to Lewis in the corner, in trouble, double teamed to McGregor. Finds Sims all alone for a three. They had the guy dead to rights in the corner Sims in a great double three. team. You can't let a guy split you. Once that happens, the team is so overloaded on the one side trying to rotate to cover for everybody else. That leaves Sims wide open in the corner to knock down that three. His third three ball of the night, 10 points for Jordan Sims, 12 point. Roadrunner lead, White, the runner with the left hand, good, Number and a two, foul. Caleb White, basket is good. The foul on, on the Keon Lewis, 44, Keon his first Lewis. of the night. His second personal first Had team a chance at the old-fashioned three-point play for Caleb White. Caleb White, he, Pirates, Caleb he's going to be a player in this one. league. He's a freshman right now. He's a great driver going left, a very capable shooter. Shot 40% from three this year, so... He adds some weight to his body, becomes a little bit more aggressive. He's going to be a big-time scorer. Pressure by the Pirates nearly coming away with a steal. Nine-point game. Once again, 50-41. to 41. Lewis, bullet pass, deflected, and Richmond comes up with it for East Carolina. Robinson. They swing it around. Campbell wide open for a three. Campbell should thank Robert's Richmond. I know he got the pass three. from Richmond too, but two defenders from UTSA both jumped to Richmond because he's such a big-time shooter, which a lot of teams would do, but Campbell makes him pay. Six-point game now, 50-44. to 44. Agussi backs away from Robinson. This is where it's see if UTSA is tough enough. I mean, everything's easy when things are going well and you're making every shot, but when the team starts making a run at you and you turn it over, let's see if they can answer. Campbell finds a wide open white for a three. No good. And Lewis brings it up the floor for the Roadrunners. Just under 18 minutes to play in the ball game. An 18-point lead for the Roadrunners, down to six now. Lewis gets it into McGregor. Another soft shot with the left McGregor. hand by the big man. And McGregor's just so strong and physical in there. He takes that jump stop, kind of puts you on your heels, and then he powers it up and just gets it on the rim. He's got great touch inside. He still hasn't missed tonight. McGregor with 11. The lead at eight now. Zangari out high. Finds White. Now Campbell the drive, the floater, and the friendly roll. 22, Very Roberts aggressive Campbell. drives. Gave him a jab step, faked one way, went hard to the right, got to the paint, and nice little floater. Six-point game. Just under 17 minutes to play here in El Paso. Agussi to McGregor. Out to Sims. That three comes up short. And here comes East Carolina. Uh-oh. Richmond, another three, good again! Saw it coming, you gotta Richmond locate these guys in transition. ECU is very, very aggressive when they come coming at you on transition. Gotta be able to find their best player, Richmond. Makes it a three-point game, and that ties the record, and a silly foul by Robinson. Whistled for the foul. Number 11, Antonio and glares at his first Sean Casey. Second team foul. Sean Casey glared back. Yes, he <laughs> well, did. Correction, first team foul on ECU. Looks like a pretty obvious call. Roadrunners on the shove in the back by Robinson. His first foul. First of the half on the Pirates. Little more than 16 minutes remaining. Lewis finds a wide open McGregor. As close as you can get, and that's Pirates his first missed shot of the night. So McGregor misses the most the point blank, the easiest shot, the dunk step. shot. Doesn't get high enough, kind of just rattles it out and hits it off the shot clock. It's, 
it's unfortunate for him, but the momentum has completely shifted from the way things were going in the first half. Chance to tie, perhaps, for the Pirates. 